we've been doing a little mini series in our series. So we've been learning from Jesus in the book of Matthew, and we came to a part that particularly focuses on the, the kingdom of heaven. So we've, we've kind of cut that out into a little short mini series. Last week we did, how do you get in? And remember that the rich have a hard time getting in, and we're going to back up a little bit and look at that uh, again um, a little bit. Not, not focus on it, or focuses on the next one. So how do you get in? Well, become like a little child. You turn and become like a child in faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and what is the cost is what we're going to look at today. What is the cost of getting into the And then, Lord willing, next week we'll say, what are we called to do? We'll, we'll look at that. We'll actually get into chapter 20 of uh, the book of Matthew. First thing I want to introduce you to is a weird word. It's called paradox. Now, some of you might be thinking, well, that's not so weird. That's what I have out on the lake. It's a paradox. Well, that's not exactly what it means. It's P-A-R-A-D-O-X. And there's a paradox. Paradox is a statement that seems self-contradictory or absurd, but in reality expresses a And I have the paradox that's in one of the paradoxes, a number of them, but one of them that we're going to look at today. Simply put, salvation is completely free. It cost you everything. They seem to be contradictory, but we'll find that they're actually true as we work our way through this passage. So let's start with that first part. Salvation is completely free. And Jesus said to his disciples, truly, I say to you, only with difficulty will a rich person enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? And Jesus looked at them and said, With man this, but with God all things are possible. I'm reminded of that little phrase about the camel, and, and I think, I don't know if I said it last week, but I think what Jesus was actually doing, there's a lot of discussion about this in all the books, what Jesus was actually doing is he's just picking the biggest animal that they knew. You know, if they were a little bit further down into Africa, it might have been, you know, an uh, elephant or a rhinoceros or a hippopotamus. But the, the biggest thing that they knew was a camel. So it's easier for a camel. And then he, he chose the smallest space that they were familiar with, the eye of a needle. And the disciples got the point, didn't they? When they heard this, they were greatly astonished, saying, who then can be saved? And you say, well, rich person entering the kingdom of, of heaven, it is impossible. See, what I believe is that back in their day, and, and the, the feeling is still around today, that, that if you're rich, you're blessed of God, you see. And so they felt, hey, if anybody's going to get in, it's those that are blessed of God, and, and the rich are obviously blessed of God. So if it's impossible for a rich man to get into heaven, well, what about the rest of us? Who then can be saved? Uh, Jesus answered simply. Very powerful question. Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said, With man, this being saved is impossible. Henderson, commentating on this passage in Matthew, says, at every point, be and man on God for salvation. You recognize that this is also, this passage, this story is kind of all so I flipped over there to see what William Henderson said in Mark. And 
see if he repeated himself, you know, saving some ink or something, but he did. He repeated what he actually meant, but he said it in a different way. Salvation from start to finish, he says, is not a human. See, the, the rich aren't going to be saved. The beautiful aren't going to be saved by their beautiful. The powerful aren't going to be saved by their power. And even the virtuous are not going to be saved by their virtue. If anybody is going to be saved, they will be saved by God. In all honesty, we have, I mean, the human race has a really hard time believing that. You mean, I don't do anything? God didn't look down and see how special I was and, and select me? In fact, we have a, a, a testimony in the Old Testament that, that God actually chose Abraham and then eventually Israel, the people, because they were small and less. We have a hard time believing this truth. It's a stumbling stone for so many. Salvation is completely free. See, I'm glad that Jesus didn't stop with, with man this is impossible but he finished it but with god all things are possible this can be also another stumbling block for us because we think well all you have to do it doesn't really matter your performance how good of a person you are all you have to do is trust in the lord jesus christ and you're saved Yeah, it might be hard for a rich person to trust in God instead of their riches, but God will get them to do it. It might be hard for an arrogant, self-centered, power-hungry, chauvinistic to, chauvinist to be saved, but God can do it. A hardened criminal? God can do it. Even Craig Rankin. God can do it. If you have, and this is one of the encouraging parts of this, if you have someone in your life that you would say, it would take a miracle for them to come to Jesus, praise God. Because everyone who really comes to Jesus is a bona fide miracle. So don't give up. God can do it. Not only are we not in any way able to save ourselves, God offers salvation to us for free. Salvation is completely free. Now that statement needs a little bit of a qualifier. It's free to us. But it came at great cost. In chapter 20, we're, Lord, Lord willing, we'll actually work our way through to the end of chapter 20, and then we'll go on to a different series but, of Matthew. But Jesus tells his disciples, See, we're going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man, that's how he referred to himself, the Son of Man will be delivered over to the chief priests and scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. And he will be raised on the third day. It's offered free to us at great cost to the Lord Jesus Christ. Condemn him to death and deliver him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. And he will be raised on the third day. Jesus knew exactly what he was heading into. So, the first part of our uh, paradox. Salvation is completely free. Again, we answer the question, what was the cost? Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Now we get to the next section of the, the paradox. But it may cost you everything. It may 
cost you everything. And Peter said in reply, see, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? At first I thought, oh, here goes Peter again, sticking his foot in his mouth. Now he's asked some pretty good questions, sticking his foot in his mouth. And this is actually a good one. But then as I, I, I read this, I thought, no, this is not a stupid question. Look at the way Jesus is answering it. He answers it so straightforwardly. And he tells us so much information. And it's actually a little bit confusing. But he tells them what they're going to get. Leaving everything, like Peter just claimed, for Jesus will be worth it all. This is what Jesus says. Jesus said to them, truly I say to you, remember whenever he's saying that, he's saying, hey, this is, this is real, real. No joke, listen up. Truly I say to you, in the new world, and there's no other way of interpreting that in the new world other than the world that we have now is the old world. And in the future, and we hear of it in the book of Revelation and so on, this world will be cleansed and renewed, and it will be a new world. Jesus' followers will be there. In the new world, and he even tells us when this is going to take place, when the Son of Man will sit on his glorious throne. You, you kind of get the picture that it's, it's still to come. You who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Wow. Sounds kind of specific to the 12. I'm not even sure what this means. How does it work? It sounds like Jesus is going to be reigning on his throne, but the, the, the disciples are going to be sitting on 12 thrones and they're going to be judges. Now, Paul picks up this theme and he says it of all believers. So, so we'll have to wait to figure it all out. But, but Paul also says this. In 1 Corinthians, he uses this as part of his argument of why Christians should settle matters with Christians. And he says this, Or do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world is to be judged by you, are you incompetent to try trivial cases? Do you not know that we are to judge angels. Wow. How much more than matters pertaining to this life. So this is a really hard concept, but Jesus is saying, okay, there's going to be a new world. You're going to be there and you're going to have authority. Even over angels, it sounds like in Paul's writing. By the way, that's 1 Corinthians 6 verses 2 and 3. So Jesus, maybe he's just pointing this right at the 12, but, but it probably includes all who have followed him. As he says, you who have followed me. But this obviously includes everyone. But it may cost you everything. And everyone who has left houses or brothers or sisters or father or mother or children or land for my name's sake will receive a hundredfold and will inherit eternal life. So there's two things. Number one, in order to follow Jesus, you may be called upon to sacrifice something. This list is just representative. I don't think it's exhaustive. It just tells us all those things that we that we hold important, like like uh, house. And land, uh, relationships like brothers, sisters, father, mother, or children, possessions. But, but in following Jesus, we may be called on to, to, to sacrifice other things. We may be called on to sacrifice everything. And the second part there is for my name's sake. So, so, 
two parts, something sacrificed, and it's for Jesus. If we let our minds go back to the rich young ruler, this is what he refused to do. He refused to sacrifice his possessions for Christ. And I would beg, I would, I would say that he didn't understand that in that trade to choose Christ, he was getting the better. Then there's two promises. So you sacrifice something, maybe everything, for Jesus' sake. Those are the two things, and then two promises that come with it. The first, you will receive a hundredfold. In other words, one of the promises is if you sacrifice something for the Lord Jesus Christ, you will receive a hundred times more of what does that work? And I can't help but let me like Gloria Burns. who's, you know, never carried a child of her own. But she's got thousands of people that count her. And once again, she was reminded of the influence that she had. She was talking to somebody on the phone, and, and they said, Boy, your voice sounds familiar. Have you ever told Bible stories over the phone? Yeah, that's what she used to do. Bible story. I forget exactly what it was called. It's just an illustration of receiving a hundredfold now for the sacrifice that you've given to Jesus. The second thing, so two promises. You do a hundred times more of what you of what you sacrificed, of what was sacrificed. The second promise is you will inherit eternal life. Remember where uh, the young man came to Jesus and said, What deed must I do to have eternal life? And he walked away without it. And here we have, it might cost you everything to follow Jesus, but it'll be worth it. You get a hundredfold of everything you sacrifice, and you'll gain eternal life. A reward that cannot be replaced. One last little section, verse uh, 30, that we need to look at. The very end here. But many who are first will be last and the last first. See, it, it's it's as if the Lord Jesus just, just turns our whole value system upside down. He says, what you're valuing right now, in the end, it will be worthless. And what you'll value in the end, when you actually get to see eternity, that will last forever. So let, let me. Many, like the, the rich young man, last. Many who have everything now, they'll be last in the kingdom. And the last, like Jesus' followers or Jesus' disciples, who had nothing, who left everything. Will be first. A few statements Jesus put everything we might value in this world up against the value of following Him. And He basically says, if you have the chance to sacrifice all for me, do it. It will be worth it. Following Jesus. More than anything else that you can imagine. It's hard to believe, isn't it? Following Jesus might cost you everything, 
but it will be worth it. Jesus will further illustrate the kingdom in, uh, for us in Matthew 20, which we're hoping to look at next week. What, just what we got here. Salvation is completely free, but it may cost you everything. Are you willing to take the free gift of salvation? Are you willing to set aside your pride, your accomplishments, your self-worth, and trust Jesus in Jesus alone? Salvation is completely It was paid in full by our Lord Jesus Christ in his death and resurrection on the cross. His death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave. Salvation is completely free, but it may cost you everything. Do you see the value of having Jesus above all else? Do you see that it's worth following Jesus and sacrificing for him? Salvation is completely free, but it may cost you everything. Heavenly Father, bring these two truths, this paradox as we call it, seem to be contradicting each other. But Lord, the truth is, is salvation is completely free, but it may cost us everything but it will be worth it all. So Lord, help us to balance these things in our heart. We live in a world that calls for all of our attention, that drives us to get, gain, to fight, to strive. Lord, may we rest in Christ. The free salvation that he has paid. And yet, as he leaves us here and we continue, may we represent him faithfully. No matter the cost. Knowing in the long run, how we have Jesus. So Lord, I do pray. In Jesus' name, amen.